So that's the most important thing. I absolutely um, agree. And that's part of why I wanted you to talk to the group because yeah. I, I want people to realize that um, it is a parametric tool, but it doesn't have to be driven that way. And, yeah. and Fusion 360 is good at, at some things and not good at others. Uh, I, I'm waiting to figure out if I'm the first one who's going to coin the term Confusion 360. But anyway, <laughs> um, and that usually happens when you talk about copying and moving. Then when you make changes to one piece, it happens to your copied part or it doesn't, depending how you copied it and how you pasted it. Yeah. And there's, there's a whole um, hierarchy of parent-child relationships as you progress along the timeline of your design that can really be problematic. And, yeah. um, and that's part of why Fusion 360 put in the option to turn off the timeline. Yeah. And, and that's kind of why the, the command, the command make independent is one of my one of my mainstays in being able to do it because sometimes I want it, one times I want four legs to update at once and sometimes I don't so I make them independent so I use that all the time. Right. Sorry. Hey, Tim, quick, Tim, remember how you did that loft along the spline with yep. two different diameters mm -hmm. and how it wasn't working? Mm -hmm. I was in a 3D forum and a guy made something like that somebody else came in and said how did you do that i keep doing it and it doesn't work and i explained to him how he was using fusion 360 and i said nope split it in half cut it in half and do half and then mirror it <laughs> it's like, yeah i mean those are yeah. quirks it is it isn't the strongest tool out there but you know it's the best it's the best one for the price i think well yeah you can't beat it for free <laughs> that's the most important thing uh, so let me go ahead and talk for another one more second. I want to open up another design here in, in the background. So, yeah, yeah, no. So I'll just, uh, while, while Perry's doing that, I'll just, uh, say, yeah, I, I saw when he sent me his, his design that he wasn't using the timeline. And, um, I realized that a lot of people have very good 3d visualization skills. And a lot of people are really good at working out these details before they put it into CAD. Um, I have reasonable 3D visualization skills, but I'm not good at working out all the details before I get them into CAD. And in particular, um, I don't have a really good natural aesthetic um, touch. So I have to make it realize how ugly it is and then play around with the parameters until it looks reasonable. Yeah, that's why that is one thing I love about the 3D is basically you can visualize you know, what, like I said, what's in my mind's eye pretty quickly. Uh, so first of all, most important is I, I really like your guys' design. I'm, I wasn't in any way, shape, or form trying to dish your design at all. You've done a lot of good work, and it's really, really cool how you did, you know, the, the fold out and all that stuff. So major, 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 you know, creds to all you guys for creating that thing. I didn't want to intend to stomp on it at all. That's why I was very, very careful in this whole thing. Uh, I've been retired for two years. Uh, I started out with Travis actually as my mentor uh, in CNC. And I gotta tell you, that is just the most ironic thing for me to hear given how far beyond anything I can do you have progressed. So say it as often as you like because it's amazing <laughs> to hear those words. Yeah. <laughs> So my, my, my first, you know, my, my first responsibility was to create joinery. So I've done a lot of work in that area and uh, I've actually recently gotten to Japanese joinery, which is really, it's really, I mean, it's, it's, you can just keep going forever in any direction you want to with this stuff. That's what I really love about it. So I've been doing this for two years. Uh, I race on a bike trainer, if you think Peloton, except you're in a, it's a, imagine a combination between Peloton and Fortnite, for those of you who know what either of those are. <laughs> uh, basically I go in there and race with other people all around the world uh, and I have a bunch of friends that do this. I, I, I'm also a cycling coach. So what I did was, uh, since we have these trainers in our houses in front of a TV, we need a table to sit by them. Uh, so since I give all my friends a free project and they decide whatever they want, uh, I've started building these things that I call Zwift tables. I really, I like a modernistic type of design, as you can probably tell from looking at the table. So I also wanted that and I wanted something that was very easy to put together. So I found pre-finished plywood, which means I don't have to finish it. I finished the first one or first two, and it was a lot of work to do that. I figured, well, if I'm going to build it for somebody and I can give them a good product, I'll probably buy a sheet of pre-finished plywood. It looks really good, and they're very happy with the result. So I did that. And I also wanted to be able to put it together really, really quickly. Uh, I took one of these tables over to a friend's house and 
put it, took it out of the car and within five minutes we had it basically standing by itself uh, in his garage and he just sat there for the rest of the day. You do have to glue it and I just, you don't want to have not glued, but uh, it, it is really quick to put together and really easy to glue. So if we want to do kits for these things, for some people may want to put them together, for some may not, uh, that's an option. So let me go ahead and share my desktop and I can kind of show you a little bit about this. And I'm just going to share the little desktop because it's, that's easier. If I remember how to do that. Share screen. <laughs> Oh, come on. Tim, are you not seeing your desktop as an option? I'm not seeing my desktop as an option, Travis. What's yeah. up with that? That's, that's something you actually have to have selected before you signed in in your video setup within the Zoom app. So you won't see right. that. Perhaps you will see, though, the uh, application that you'd like to share. We're going to do Fusion. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. okay, so this is ver generation two of the Oh, there we go. I just blanked out. Oh, come on. There we go. So the very first generate, there it blanked out again. We see it. Okay, good. Be part of it. Well, that's true. <laughs> uh, the middle of the top of the screen is missing. <laughs> there we go. So this is the first generation. Yeah, why does it keep blanking out? All right. This is the first generation. Wow. Something weird's going on. Well, let me just try the views. Let me. Well, I'm share and try again. Yeah, because this is really not working right. Okay. Let's see. Okay, I'm back to normal. Okay, and one second. Let me change the view to speaker view again. So I'm having so many things at once. You know, Perry, this part of your presentation is riveting. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to find share. I'm trying to find share again. <laughs> oh, here we go. Share screen. This is where you're supposed to talk amongst yourselves. All right, let's try that. You know, we do have a chance to see Perry's quote shop unquote behind him. Looks very much like a bedroom to me. Uh, I used to be. <laughs> okay. Do you always train your cat to walk by behind you? Oh, did she walk by? That's funny. She wants to know what's all what's going on up here. Okay, here we go. Let's try this again. She also makes her way into many of the pictures of his projects. <laughs> now, after Travis's remark, are you into gun control or not? Is that regarding the cat? <laughs> I'm trying to get, I'm trying to figure out the segue there too. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, second. yeah, so of course Fusion crashed. So let me fire it up again. I should know better. Speaking of cats in a shop, um, somebody said a cat got into their laser while it was running. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Got some hair, got some hair burned. I'm sure they frantic it, scamper. It's like, yikes, why? Well, I don't know. Chasing a laser my is one thing, it. but getting in a laser table, now that's completely crazy. Yeah, no kidding. Well, yeah, while it's running. I mean, that is the, <laughs> there must have been a good mouse that ran up there or something. There we go. Just because uh, Perry encouraged us to talk amongst ourselves for a minute here. Doug, how was first day back at school? Oh, it was a mixed bag. Um, so guys, just so you know, he works at an elementary school. And uh, I guess this was day one with yeah. uh, people coming back in. 
So wow. yeah, um, lots of kids, you know, forgetting to put their masks on, you know, I'll walking bet. around, walking right next to other kids. We were outdoors. I was working the lunch court area, um, but it's outdoors. So it's not so bad because, you know, and right. they just were passing by. Um, but I also saw just a ton of them when their masks were on, they're just, you know, not, not over their noses. Right. Um, I don't know how the teachers are, you know, how, what, you know, what the teachers are doing about it. And yeah. that's where it's when they're sitting in a classroom for so long and stuff. But uh, other than that, I mean, we worked a week, I worked a week uh, before school started with the principal and, and staff and we were painting, um, stuff on the campus for people to stay you know where they would stage and stuff so it was there was lots of planning and it were showed they operating it with the three foot rule or the six foot rule um outside it was the six foot rule inside it's five foot rule five foot oh yep when when the union the school teachers union um signed the contract it was still um it was five feet so instead of changing the contract, they just stuck with the five feet. Wow, I see a screen that looks like it's okay. There shape. we go. There we go. Yeah, the tabletop is uh, visibility is turned off, but yeah, that's okay. So yeah, somehow I went back into old-fashioned uh, 800 by 600 mode. But anyway, you can get the point. So this is generation two of the table. This is the one that I actually took as a source for the table that. Uh, I showed you guys. Uh, this is a round version. We can either have the, there was a USB uh, power port that we can either add or not add to this. I mean, cause they need power for whatever they need. And then if you want to do a desk clamp also, <clears throat> what I did here. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Perry, just to be clear because I've been seeing so many square designs. This is the design, not for your uh, bike club group but you, what you came up with for the students. This is the bike club group. Oh, this is the bike club. Okay. Just trying to keep, keep up with you here. Okay. Yeah. And you can see a couple of different things with this. You can see basically, let me turn off the tight tabletop. So the wings, this one actually is a little bit different than the one that I made for the kids. And essentially the joinery goes into the side wings instead of on the back of it. It's kind of six and one half a dozen the other. So it's kind of, but it seems easier basically to have them assemble it with a little slot back here, like you see on the one here. Well, like the one. In the Is the cross number just a uh, non-through tenon? Is that how That's you're doing it? Yeah, because I, I really didn't like the, the the appearance when it actually went all the way through. So I just made this is uh, 465 thick. It's half inch plywood, but it's really 465 uh, thick. Yeah. What I did was I just went 230. And right. you'd be amazed if you just you know, do that and you, you glue it. It's incredible how strong that joint is. Cool. So, and this also doesn't stand alone by itself with it in this configuration. Whereas if in the student version. I'm sorry, what did that mean? It doesn't stand by alone by itself in that configuration. What did that mean? In other words, I, I, I could basically stand up this desk uh, fully assembled without the boxes and it would stand there by itself with the other version with the tenon between the two and with the legs spread out, uh, like with the legs spread out, you have to basically clamp these two legs together to make it stand. So for assembly, it made it a lot tougher. Ah, so, got it, for assembly, got it. So for, for this, now you can see there's a slot. If I take off the wing, got the wrong one. Hey, Tim, doesn't he do a great job of naming his individual elements there? Yeah, he, he does. He does a much better job than I do. So I, I, I've tried to uh, take a page from, from his book. Right. So, so anyway, you can see the slot here, basically. It, it really fits in well. And like I said, it can stand up by itself before you even glue it. So, you know, throwing them together is a lot easier. Is really easy. what, can you describe that slot? Was it uh, like too angled but parallel? Or is it, how is it? Oh, okay, it's a strictly a straight lay-in, huh? There's no- uh, Perfectly straight though. You can see it has a little bit of a curve to it. Right, right, okay. Uh, that could be modified though, the same way that uh, Tim had a good question about the tenon down here and that 
there is a curved angle going down, and I don't think I did it on this version. We'll find out if I did or not. But uh, no, I did not. So basically, I'm not going into this at an angle because if you go into this at an angle, you can't really cut an angle on a CNC because you can only cut straight down. So what I did was I extended this leg or this foot straight down like a half an inch. So it gave me a square uh, end. I wonder if I did that on the other one over here. Dang, I must have. Anyway, no. Uh, so basically it goes into the uh, ski, what I'll call it in, in Tim's honor, straight down and you can glue straight into it. So, so the, the, the foot in its entirety goes into a recess, into a mortise, as opposed like to a mortise a or anything. That actually makes it a lot more stable. Okay. And, so, and I didn't, cool. I didn't actually have the and foot Perry, on. Perry, have you? Go ahead. Have you made one of these? And can you comment on how the assembly of this would go? I've made. I haven't made this particular student desk yet because I wanted you guys. If you approve the design, I'll go ahead and make a prototype and uh, make a pallet for you guys. Uh, or you can you can do the pallet too. I've made geez, half a dozen of this type of design though, uh, and this one right here. Oh, hang on, let me find the first one. I guess that the question is, you know, if, if this is a kit that we would send home with a family, um, is it the kind of thing that they could do with a relatively simple set of instructions and no tools required, or is it more complicated than that? Well, I, th I think so, but you know, as the project team, I'll let you guys be the judge of that. I mean, it, it's easy for me and everybody that I showed it to, once I gave them a few simple tips on, you know, how it put together, they thought it was simple too. Uh, but you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm in, and I'm in a vacuum myself, so I will uh, gladly accept the input of others on that, on that, on that aspect. So, Kurt, I thought, about, I thought about that one too, and and um, I can I can comment it a little bit later. But I think we could do a partial assembly. Yeah. That they could then finish. Got it. So you, this is this is actually the one that I based it off of. So you can see these are straight legs, and then it had a wing coming up from the bottom, which I never really liked, and so that's why I redid it. So you can see this guy down here. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, though, the tabletop and the way that this wing, let me turn off the tabletop, this wing actually captures these two legs and your assembly starts there. And then I actually had cup holders because everything needs a cup holder, right? <laughs> these were actually cup holders in the original design. Uh, but I thought, you know what, let's just take it and make it the boxes. Uh, what I really think, I don't know, I'll let you guys, you know, judge the opinion or get, get your opinion too. If you made, because right now, this center divider is the backing for these two boxes on the sides. Uh, that makes assembly a little more difficult and you really have to build these boxes first and then glue them and clamp them. Mm. Whereas if you had a drop-in box, it can be laser, that's fine, uh, with a small lip around the edge, basically you could build those independently. They set this up and then basically you just slam four boxes in here and they're done. Yeah. So but that cross member is also providing the strength up top in terms of keeping the legs in place, correct? That's correct. Yeah. That, what that size CNC are you machining these components on? I have a four foot by four foot. Yeah, that's a little bit larger than our capabilities well, that, at the shop. We've already discussed that and I can, uh, we need to do pallets basically that'll do in your XXL. So do you, what do you think about the 32 inch Travis? Cause we talked about that a little bit. You have to go ahead and test to see how far you can go off the front. Cause you can do 30, right? On the XXL. Oh yeah, definitely 30. Yeah. So if you can do 30, basically I could make this desktop right now is 36, I think, but it'd be really easy to shrink it down to 32. Uh, I'll show you a 32 one later. Yeah. Okay, okay cool. Uh, 32, you know, if you could do 32 on that, then that, I think that's a good size. I think that's a really good width for these. And even if you yeah, have to shrink and, it a little bit. And this, the, the 30, just uh, for Paul's sake, because separate conversations have taken place on this issue of the XXL. Uh, Paul, the fact that the bed itself is not uh, capable of allowing you to do the full 33 by 33, because uh, some of that distance is off the front and so uh, you would have to clamp it down and allow some of the cutting to take place over the front lip. We actually have to test it exactly how far we can go. But the notion is that in order to get as large the uh, cutting area as possible, at least for uh, considering what 
is possible, we would assume that we could cut off the front as well. And uh, we'll have to test that, but um, because Perry was the guy who actually came up with the, the uh, end joinery fixture that we used to cut you know, dovetails and box joints, et cetera, on the CNCs at the shop. And that was done off the front. We know that it's certainly possible. So I won't take this any further, but suffice it to say, we need to build a prototype on it to figure out exactly where the bounds are of what's possible and then go from there. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I don't see any problems with the larger pieces, just making a template and using a handheld router to route out the components because you only have select pieces that you need to, to cut out. So it's just a, a, an observation because why, why take up the time on the larger on the on the CNC when you can easily clamp a template with a router bit and the bearing to do the larger pieces and then be done with it uh, and machine the smaller components uh, on the CNC. So yeah, okay, please continue. Whichever way gets to where you need to be. How many of these things are we going to build? Are you going to build? Kurt, what was the last you talked to them about? Well, they would like thirty for sure. Um, okay. But they have a need for up to 100. Wow. OK. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> How about the material? OK, so anyway, I won't get into that. But, uh, so you get to play Tetris if you want to build these on the CNC and palletize. This is the pallets that I made for the first design. You can see that uh, I basically picked the size of plywood that I wanted to use. I think this was six by no, five by five, I think this was. And you get to play Tetris and see how many of these things will fit. Uh, Doing some of them on the router actually makes sense. I mean, like these pieces, right? I mean, especially the, the, the tabletop, maybe. It makes sense, sense to do that. Uh, the wings to somewhat, and then these guys, they're actually going to be smaller. So, uh, but yeah, you will have to create a pallet. Yeah, just out of curiosity. You creating your pallet in, in Fusion 360. I'm sorry? How do you how do you do this pallet layout in Fusion what 360? What I did was I, uh, I created a separate design. And then I just basically flattened everything out yeah. and then moved it around. And I'm just curious because inside of VCarve Pro, you can actually tell it to optimize for certain uh, size pieces of wood. And I'm wondering if that is a function inside of Autodesk uh, Fusion 360 as well or not. Oh, I wish. <laughs> okay. I have not seen that function. It might be in there, but I haven't seen it. Okay. I haven't seen it either. It's, it's, uh, I would be really interested to see how it would deal with a problem like this with, with really, Maybe really could write a script for us. So they used to do this on chips. They used to do this on chips back at Qualcomm and they palletize, you know, as many chips as they can get on a substrate. Right. But they were all square, so it was really easy. You know, squares are <laughs> So it, it is only 2D. It is yeah. only 2D. So you convert that to DXF and then possibly SVG. And there's a whole bunch of tools out there for doing optimize yeah. layouts yeah but that's used on lasers quite a bit yeah cool. yeah and it'll work for this believe it or not i actually enjoyed the challenge of seeing how many i could get on one pallet so i mean i know i could yeah. do that i actually like maybe it's maybe i just like tetris or something like that but uh, I, I enjoyed the challenge of seeing how many of these things that i could get onto one onto one pallet and it's, when, it's you do, I've, when you do when you even angles and stuff to get more stuff on it go ahead well i was gonna say in um my daughter had a birthday party and we had like 10 kids and I made some stuff and I was like, you know, I can't quite fit it on my blazer, but I can on two, two of them, you yeah. know, you kind of, when you have the quantity that you're having, you can start filling in, yeah. you know, using all that space with some right. of the stuff from the next generation, the next version or whatever, the next part. Um, and you still use a lot of your wood that way. So, you right. know, also, just so you guys know, I mean, if, you, if we get a good couple of good pallets, I, I can build a peri size pallet and I can build an XXL pallet. I, you know, I can build a few of these things. I don't mind. I, I'm willing to help with that. So, uh, it's, 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 you just kind of knock them out. It's not, doesn't take really that long. Once you get, once you get everything set up, it's basically just slamming them down there and let it, letting it rip. And you don't need to do any off the front. I made sure we didn't, I didn't need to do any off the front uh, edge of the machine uh, joinery. Perry? Is it is it all a single bit size? I mean, are you using a yeah. 40 inch, quarter inch end mill the whole time? Yeah, that's the workhorse. And then you know, if it's if you really, uh, Tim and I got into a little discussion about squaring the joints. So if you look at this guy right here, this is a yeah. nice square, and yeah. it depends that you know fitting into the fitting into this gap right here 
it depends on that being square. There's a couple different ways around that. Uh, you can you can round these. I actually prefer to actually get rid of this. Kind of depends if you want them showing through the top or not. Some guys actually like that having that joint. You know, having the end of the end grain of this pop up through this joint. Yeah. Uh, I went back and I said, you know what? I really only want to do half of this, and it 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 puts together just as well, and you can't see it. Plus, uh, I, I named these Mickey Mouse. I don't know if that's a derogatory term for the joints, but you can actually cut a round. You're talking about a dog bone? Dog bone. <clears throat> yeah, I call them yeah. Mickey Mouse, dog bone. Uh, what I'm thinking is, I don't think I have this easily defined anymore. If I take a 16th of an inch bit, because normally I've been taking 16th of an inch bits as Travis, Travis recommended many moons ago, square these guys out, you get pretty close. And you know, if it, I'm spilling one or two, I can take a file and I can knock that out in about five seconds. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to do that 30 times though. Yeah. So my thought is if I take a, <clears throat> a 16th of an inch end mill and I drive it back into this corner at a 45 degree angle, so you can see where my, where my cursor, how it's moving. Yeah. If I just drive that back in there with a 16th of an inch end mill, it has a 625 uh, depth of cut I can score that out. And, and Perry, that is imperceptible. I mean, you have to get underneath and look under the surface of the yeah. tabletop yeah. in the right spot to actually see anything. Yeah. And if you're not going through the top, then it's invisible. Yeah, if exactly. You, if we just do half of this depth, it, it's invisible. Yeah. Even if you go through the top, it's pretty small. And, and I'll, uh, I'll demo a little bit later how, how I implemented that idea of Perry's in Fusion 360. Yeah. Okay. So any other questions or anything else? I mean, this is this kind of my, yeah. has been my process. And uh... um, Perry, I'm just personally thinking that I come from a, a, so as I was talking with Kurt and others when we did the build at the shop, there was this realization I had that if we're gonna be making a bunch, um, there are really two types of work scenarios. There's working by yourself and there's working with others. And that the current one that we already have figured out is great for working with others. And it's a good community activity. It, it accomplishes goals beyond just delivering something to the school. It helps people build skills. It helps build friendships. I mean, just a lot of yeah. good things come out of it. But there are a bunch of us who would also just like to be able to sit there at a CNC and crank something out. But just as an example, the CNC is such a fantastic tool. And for a design like yours, it's possible to crank those out. So as I think about that second scenario where there are people in our community who might say, yeah, I'll make a couple of those. Um, I then think about what you said of how it could be flat packed and delivered. It could be partially assembled and the rest flat packed um, or it could be fully assembled. And I guess the area in your build that I was most intrigued by was removing any complications from the end customer so that when they get it, it's six pieces that slide yeah. together in an undeniably, unavoidably simple way. And any complications that have been removed, like for the drop-in boxes, because those were assembled and clamped and glued in advance or something like that. Do you have in mind what that later scenario is where the end customer has almost guaranteed success and First of all, that would bring back to us to do? Yeah, but there's a benefit that I don't know. I'm, I'm sure you've thought about, but there's a benefit of if they create it themselves, they have a sense of ownership with it. Oh, totally. And I, I think that has a strong, a strong, a strong attraction to be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I used to, uh, a long time ago, I used to do documentation for things like this. So I'd be willing to go ahead and put an instruction on how to do it uh, and then let, let, let other people bash it and see if they can actually do it themselves at home. But the only challenge with the- Yeah, is I, I mean- Go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think the bar is, you know, Ikea, right? Yeah. If you can make it that, it doesn't have to be, you know, there's, there are certainly ways to mess it up in an Ikea set of instructions, but generally speaking, it's pretty straightforward and most people are pretty comfortable at that level of complexity. So if you hit that bar, I think. Yeah. And there's no fasteners. Uh, the only thing is you basically, the only challenge of this is when you put glue on these joints and you slide them together, the glue will kind of smear around a little bit. So if you're careful for that, otherwise, if you don't care, and if you use the right glue, if you use tight, use tight bond too, I think, and it drives kind of like a yellow. And against the pre-finished plywood, I don't know what kind you're going to get, but uh, it doesn't. We don't either. Huh? We don't yeah. either. <laughs> well, if, if you're talking about gluing, does 
gluing in my mind automatically means clamping of some sort. So there is no clamping required. It kind of like friction fit with glue and then it yeah. don't touch it for two hours and it's set up or. I think that's what? possible in that second scenario that Travis mentioned. And, and I have put a little bit of thought into it. I would think that the desktop, the, the what I call the wing or the, or the brace, center brace, and the boxes could all be one pre-assembled um, assembly. And uh, the boxes, you know, I've, I've done a variant on now. Um, Perry did the boxes out of the same half inch plywood. So they would be absolutely durable and solid since uh, kids will be using them. Um, I did a variant where, of course it's parameterized and we can change it, but I did it with, uh, with quarter inch plywood that would be laser cut uh, with the finger joints that we're used to doing with boxes. And um, what I did for those on the folding desk was I discovered some, uh, I could get some super large elastic bands, rubber bands on, uh, on Amazon. And um, those work really well for just holding those boxes together while the glue dries. But I would think we could put those two together and then the legs um, and the brace the legs and feet could go together. And then it's just that that one uh, trainer stand or side brace or whatever we want to call it. Um, so, so that would actually be four assemblable pieces. Hey, Perry, could you show us the assembled version and then maybe tell us let me, what, what- Let me jump in and make a comment. Let me jump in and make a comment here. Yeah. Uh, let me turn the skis back on first. I'm just thinking if we're gluing things up, storage is at a premium at the shop. So it's either got has to be a flat pack that just pieces are assembled and, you know, um, uh, tie uh, not tie wrapped together, but uh, clamp, not clamp together, uh, banded together or or something else, because we can't really store these things for for long term at the shop because there is no room. So. That's something to think of. It is, but also if it is largely flat packed and it's maybe four pieces, you can think of maybe a corner in the classroom where you could store quite a few of them and not take up much space. Uh, so, build it in like lots of 10 or 20 yeah, instead of exactly. 100 at a time. Exactly. Type well, thing. Yeah, 100, yeah. I don't think we're ever going yeah. to get to. And, and there's, yeah, then there's nothing saying that we couldn't deliver them as we build them, you know, that I don't think that there's a set date when they all have to come in at, at once. Because they are individual families that are getting them, so yeah, that's right. Okay. Paul, do so, you have any idea of the production time and the material cost as a guesstimate? Let, let me make a comment. Let me go back to the gluing real quick before we get before we get there. Uh, if you put this together, there's seven pieces without the without the boxes. Uh, if you put this together and then put weight on the top tabletop. It almost clamps itself just by the weight of everything pushing down. If you think about think about where all the where all the joints are basically are basically vertical, so basically putting weight on the top of the desk. I actually clamped it myself because I, but I'm not type A that way. Uh, I could just set this thing up, put a bunch of boxes on top. It pushes down on this brace, which is important. It pushes down on these guys, which is important. We could make this more of a box type joint with more uh, uh, basically a little box. You know what I mean? And it would it'll interconnect a little bit better. So you almost don't need to clamp it. So the box is the only thing. So anyway, I apologize for interrupting, but that's, I wanted to get that out. Yeah, you would have to have a flat surface and you can't guarantee that somebody's not gonna have anything but shag carpeting or something Yeah, to not assemble this. Carpet. Cause they're gonna be assembling it at their home. It's gonna be on the skis, right? It's gonna be on the skis though. So this, even the skis are on shag carpeting, putting pressure on the top, still pushes down with the same force, whether it's on shag or whether it's on a solid floor. Am, am I wrong? No, I, I was right. just thinking about yeah. inst instability and you know levelness. And, and there's a certain there's a certain point beyond which it's not reasonable for us to actually have to accommodate, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. If the instructions say you need to do this on a flat surface. We can't very well help it if they put it, you know, in the middle of stairs, <laughs> kind of a thing. Yeah. So uh, yep. if, you know, to the extent that we can control and learn from a prototype and then improve and then lock it down. Um, no, let's just do the best we can. Yeah. Again, the uh, IKEA concept that they take it home and there's connectors that they quarter turn on a flat blade screwdriver and it's attached 
type of thing um, yeah. that yeah, the screws. end user is responsible for. Right, but they have screws and there's no screws in this, nothing holding anything together. Now, look at one thing though, in the context of this conversation, look at one thing, how this piece, because this basically, you can't really see it here and I don't know if I did this correctly or not, but this joint, these two pieces are locked together. I mean, they're they're, they're, yeah. there's, no, there's no movement between these two at all because this has yeah. half of a slot in here and this has a half a slot coming this way. When these two are together, this ain't moving. Yeah. So I think that makes it pretty stable. And then that's going to basically yeah. transmit down to this bottom part. So the only the only question mark yeah. is gonna be this. Like I said, I can make this into a box joint and yet it'll snap right on there. So anyway. So I, what I yeah. hear you saying, Perry, is that ideally the assembly of this is going to lock itself together. Uh, exactly. If it's done in such an interlocking manner that just the proper assembly clamps it by consequence of being assembled, then exactly. we don't have clamping to do, right? That was the goal. And the pocket yeah, cool. depth. Yeah. And then that's why I love that. That's why I love the drop in boxes. Once again, I'll hop on that a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Can you show us like zoom in and show us how you mean drop in? Because when I think about making something on the laser, these typical boxes are, they don't have a oh, lip on them. You'd set a lip. Who can give me a good analogy? Who also understands what I'm trying to say? So basically that would be a lip. So imagine a box that basically one side of it was on this edge. The other side was here. And then let me see if I can let's see let, let me see if I can really screw this up. So imagine it's kind of like a sink, right? Top mount versus under mount. Oh, uh, yeah. that's perfect. Thank you. That's exactly yeah. the most. Yeah. So essentially, there'll be a lip along the edge, and this is the hole for your sink, and then it just basically drops right in. They can glue it or they cannot. I mean, put a little glue on the on the on the underside of the lip, and it's not oh, going anywhere. Right. I mean, I actually got that. I was just thinking, how is is how is it that a laser cut uh, assembly would actually produce, you could assemble and make a lip that was actually going to hold on well to the box that it was supporting. So you've got the lip and you've got the box you've made. And I guess if you, uh, I don't know, had uh, sort of box joints and glue, I suppose you could do that sort of a thing. I was just wasn't sure how the lip was going to attach to the box. That's all. I have an idea for that, uh, Travis. Now, when, when Perry and I discussed it, I misunderstood what he was saying. So when he was talking about uh, the lip. Um, I didn't read it as the top mount approach. I read it as a bottom mount approach. And so I'll show you one way that it can be done that way that still locks everything into place. Okay, cool. And Perry, if you said the top, um, I, I, correct me if I heard you incorrectly, but the top with the two stays the two sides and the skis, all those would be separate pieces that would be delivered and then the boxes would be pre-assembled or is there assembly at a higher level than boxes? Like is the entire I think, top? I think we need to assemble the boxes. But I don't, that's, that's a lot to ask to have them go all yep, together. I agree. All I agree. Uh, otherwise it's seven pieces uh, that were basically shipped in a flat pack. So seven, seven, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, or is it seventh? Oh, seven. Yeah, seven pieces that would ship into a flat pack, Ikea style. Yeah. And I'm saying you could do it as four if you wanted to. We could pre-assemble the skis onto the legs. Yeah. We could pre-assemble the, the desktop, the wing, and the boxes all as one piece. And so you'd have that whole top assembly, which would be relatively flat, but as deep as the boxes are. You would have the, the legs plus ski assemblies, which would be almost flat except for the skis. And then you'd have the brace. That would be four pieces, but it wouldn't be quite as flat because of the boxes. Right, but when we're not shipping it anywhere. We're just wanting to get it in the back of someone's car, right? Right. Yeah. But if there's space limitations in the shop, you know, that's, that's an issue too. Yeah. Yeah, but I think Kurt was right. You know, if we need to get rid of five because we've got them, then we just yeah. have them come pick it up or we drop it off or whatever. Uh, but if it's four pieces, I can't imagine the assembly instructions are gonna be that involved. And it's basically an explosion diagram of the four pieces coming together, you know? Yeah. Yep. Where, where is Julia on this call? Yes, Julia is a design person. Does she have any comments? Um, 
I was just thinking about the lip, that the lip wouldn't necessarily have to be lasered. It could be just anything that protrudes, just like a little, even a, some caulk or something like that. These aren't gonna be holding huge amounts of weight. Um, yeah, I don't think you would need to do like a box joint, but um, I like the design. I think it's nice. I think it serves a, a great um, complement to the other desk, like you said before. Yeah, yeah. The group versus the individual. And they need a hundred. I mean, as many as we can make, however we make they'll be happy, right? You know what, it just occurred to me is from something you said, Julia, which is if we knew that there was some really low cost lip container that you can buy, yeah. very, very little, and you just like pop them in, pop them in, pop them in. Um, I'm not trying to take us down that direction, but it did occur to me that sometimes there'd be these, um, oh, Spiraline, I can't remember the name of the brand, but you can get boxes for like, $2, not that we want to take on a lot of extra cost here, but it could be a great simplification if there was some beautiful off the shelf, inexpensive plastic container that's set in there. It, it pulls away from the wood aesthetic, but still, I'm just thinking out loud here. Or some of the, the black expand, expanded metal, like pen holders and stuff, can, cases that you see, maybe a box made like that would work. Yeah, yeah. Or some bright, even some brightly colored plastic Bins that would be very child friendly. That's a great idea. Because they really it's easier to do the flat pack. Give it a little funky look, right? I yeah. love that. Colored shoe it. boxes. They have a lip on them. They recess. They're cheap. And of course, we're not buying. Well, there, there is the organization that is reimbursing costs. So yeah, it's it's not wood, but if it saves us time and effort and heartache, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, and as soon as Julia introduced color and personality, I mean, that, that makes it all more playful and fun. I, I can, I'm not a kid, but I'm a kid at heart. <laughs> and I really like that idea. But of course, I don't know what boxes exist that would actually uh, do that for us. We'll have to do a little research, I guess. So would you want to recess the lip so that it doesn't protrude because it's kind of there's an elegance to that whole top being flat that you could open a book over the hole without any problems or anything yeah. but the more you start building things above it then you know st stuff's going to kind of get in the well, way but that's also something he could put um uh, a rabbit around the outside that's what i was thinking if we find a plastic box that the plastic boxes are going to have you know eighth inch Depth, yeah. lips and so bang a quick little um clearance around that hole and yeah. now, nice if you're and if you're if you're uh doing the the router cnc router from the top you could just rabbit that in with the cnc router that might kind of preclude the blind um mortise for the legs or you could you could do it from the bottom side put in the blind mortise for the legs and then just manually put the rabbit in with a with a router and a follower bit right. a router with a bear right. hey travis could you 3d print the bins if i had an eternity <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes but not in our lifetime <laughs> factory of 3d printers also right. remember if you rabbiting rabbiting plywood is good but it's really ugly so it has to be covered up with something uh, right that's true good point forgot about that but if you know if you're filling if you slide a, in from the ends make like a um a little support a groove underneath where we could slide them in underneath uh, it sounds like extra uh, gluing up perhaps to put the tracks in. Um, actually, you know, I'm now thinking it is elegant to keep the lip below the surface, but it may be that it's just a whole lot easier that the lip is on the surface and we can just drop these things in. I mean, that would also keep things from falling in by mistake. Yeah. And rolling and up. Yeah. Eraser, yeah. eraser dust, 
collecting in them and never like again. Check the uh, check the chat. I found something that uh, with pit one picture is worth a thousand words. Nobody supplies more real time information than Paul Schenken. <laughs> there you go, that kind of thing. We'd have to find what was it, what's the dimension of each of those boxes currently? Do you know offhand, Perry? What's probably I'm talking about the, the four by uh, eight rectangles or for the two. This size is pretty close. <laughs> looks kind of wide. It, it looks really it? quite wide to me. It's yeah. five inches wide. Oh no, sorry, that's five inches deep. I'll take that back. Yeah, it's 16 ends? by 11. But I mean, the concept of what he's sharing yeah. with us, it has a lip, it has color, it's plastic, the right size of that sort of thing. We could make a hole uh, so, so that it would fit. Now it'd have to be much smaller, I would think. Uh, Perry, does your design allow for like one long uh, box on the side? Was the two simply because your stay um, protruded out? I mean, why, why is it that it's two boxes currently? On each um, side? I thought that the mid support, the mid wing support would be a really good back and basically saves material is, is it being the back for both of the side boxes. There's no reason it couldn't be one box. Oh, it is, it is the sides. Yeah, okay, it's the inside it side on both boxes. Yeah, got it. Yeah. I like it better the way Perry's done it, to be honest, because it locks together well that way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. both sides, just the same way that Perry mentioned how the, um, that wing locks into the legs, the sides of the boxes would also lock into the wings the same way, a halfway cut yeah. on each one so that they interlock. Could you show us a picture, um, Perry, and what, tell me what he just said? <laughs> I, uh, say it again, because I'm not 100%. Uh -oh. I'll yeah. close. Well, I'll, I'll, show you, I'll show you when I show my uh, parametric version of it. But basically, the, there's a slot in that side is a one long side of the box. The, the two boxes have one share sides, basically. There's, right. And each, each side has a slot that goes down halfway. And so it slides onto right. the mm -hmm. top of the wing. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Um, so, sorry, Perry, go ahead. It sounds like you want to do a rabbit, not a rabbit, but you do a dado on both sides of this for the boxes? Yeah, let, once you're done, Perry, I'll show you um, kind of my implementation of, of your design. Um, for a couple reasons. One is I have thought, I, I took some of those aspects a little bit further. And then um, also kind of want to show the group some of the things that, that um, we can do parametrically. Okay. Just remember this was, this was two, about two hours of my effort from one to the other. So just, I, uh, if I do I, release, I, recognize I want to basically have the time to finish the joinery myself and do a little, little touch up on it. So just, just let that be known. Go ahead. No, I, I appreciate that fact. I, I, um, I'm a better implementer than I am a designer. I, I don't have a lot of, of good aesthetic creativity. So, uh, you know, my contributions to the desk have been taking uh, Julia's aesthetic design on the folding desk and Perry's aesthetic design on the, um, on the plywood desk here and playing around with implementation. And I did have a little bit more time to spend on this than Perry did. So uh, again, per, same as Perry's comments earlier, um, this is just a, a, this is a collaborative, uh, collaborative effort, yeah. not, a, not a competitive one. Hey, can I ask Absolutely. one more question before, if you guys were gonna switch back to uh, Tim? Um, you know, it, it's so tempting, Perry, to hear you make an offer of creating a prototype and I'd imagine at the end of the call, if we were all still in agreement that we'd love to take you up on that, but I don't quite get yet from what we see on the screen, how what we see on the screen changes if we decided we will do laser drop-in boxes and how that works in that cross member up top, it, it's, it needs to protrude all the way through the boxes currently. Um, That's fine. It, you just don't, you just let it happen still and you just put the boxes on either side of it. Yep. Ah, okay, got it. And following up, following up Travis's remark, 
uh, I don't quite understand what the students are going to use the boxes for. And would it better be better to have a flat desktop, which they can yeah. spread out on, and maybe have a shelf underneath to put books and things in? Do you, do you need all of these things on the top? And what is the cost of adding those to the, to, to the lovely concept? I had the same thought. Well, I just remember when I first heard it being proposed in Julia's design that any kid is going to have things like pencils, erasers, books, uh, paper, pads, uh, calculators, and they just need a place to put those things. And the abundance of storage areas that came up in Julia and Tim's design seemed to address that. Um, I suppose that's why I don't question it quite as much, just because this isn't even a folding design. So whatever they have to store, they'll be able to put in these boxes and rummage them out when they need them. Now, are they big enough? You know, like can a pencil lie flat? I mean, things like that, no idea. But it does represent storage of what a kid has to have as they do their schoolwork. That, that's I guess and why maybe they question. just maybe they just need one. Just on one side. Or maybe a, a pencil jar that just nests in there. Well, I like the, I mean, the idea right. of paper. Yeah. So I just measured it. So it's 9.7 9 inches. So that's enough to put a, basically a piece of paper, even if you just had two, it would just limit it just two boxes and maybe a pencil holder. But it is, it is wide enough or long enough for a sheet of paper or a clipboard or whatever. Or well, frankly, a book or two, because they're not going to be longer than eight and a half or yeah. nine yeah. inches. Now that would be in the event that it was one box on each side rather than two, which then means that that cross member uh, needs to be shortened in order for one yeah, box I, to fit in there. I do like this. I, Go ahead, I do like the storage. I think you know my kids are grade school age, and they're you know constantly grabbing for their crayons, their markers, their worksheet, their book. Their, their, there's a lot of stuff that they they have to nearby them when they're when they're doing their work. So I think having some storage for that kind of stuff is is pretty useful for them. And and Julia was the other person on the call from a previous meeting that has a, a kid that's been growing up in the house and who has that experience. So that's I think one of the reasons correct me if I'm wrong, Julia, but that's one of the reasons you put those in there, right? Yes, I, and honestly I'm just I hate to not if there's a possibility for storage in anything, I want storage. I like everything to have a place and yeah. it just helps keep things organized. And I know not everybody is like that, but I hate to pass up a chance to have some storage. So, so, so here's an idea for an easy storage solution. You do a laser cut box that fits inside that slot, right? That hole right there. You know, see, see that vertical piece that holds the legs in place? You put a horizontal slot on there and you have a piece, a piece of plywood that's got a slot. You fit, fit that in sideways, turn it, and it locks in place. And now you can just slip, slide the boxes inside there and they'll stay flush up with the top and they can't fall down because you've got that board underneath with the with the right you're kind of using the same technique as you use to hold the legs and that way it, you can use a nice small laser cut box and it won't stick up kind of just fits right in julia this, this is perry do you think that one long box would be better than the two short boxes oh yeah for sure okay. actually you know yeah. it might be nice to have a long one on one side and two short ones on the other side that's great yeah, the I like long that. one, like for books and rulers, and the short one for crayons and markers. And it'd be pretty easy to cut, you know, cut a gap out of this or cut a out of this panel. Like, what be Tim? What do you have on yeah. yours? You have something like that on yours? Yeah. So what I what I have is a little bit close to what Doug was describing. It is it is uh, two long sides that slide on with the slots, similar to the slot that's that's uh, between the wing and the leg, but. Um, yeah, you could you could make a, a massive cutout in that wing between the two sides of the box, effectively joining them. 
do you have a drawing when we get to yours, Tim? Just out of curiosity, because yeah. I'm, I'm having a hard yeah. time envisioning it. Yeah, if, if, if we're ready to move on, I'll- uh, I'm gonna stop sharing. Show. Yeah, I, just, I just wanna thank Chris for having brought up the question about whether we needed the storage or not. That's the kind of conversation you have to have uh, on different facets to make sure you've landed in the right spot. Yeah, and you know, this is why I like bringing projects like this to a group like this, because everybody has lots of ideas and um, you know, you brainstorm and you get some that, that work and some that don't, but uh, you know, seven heads are always better than one. Sometimes you have to work pretty hard though to bring Julia into the conversation. I'd, I'd love to bring, <laughs> Pardon, I'd Chris? love to take this point to bring Julia into the conversation. I just bought her book. I need to know. It is fantastic. Oh, her book? Yes. Oh, that's great. Absolutely. It's almost a compulsory thing to read. <laughs> and the second thing, just to, I would like on a, on a desk, if I had kids and I'm 85 or close and I don't have too many kids around, I would like a hook on the side where I could hang my satchel, which I take to school, which has got everything in it anyway. Uh, and that's all I need. And earphones. Um, the yeah. kids all need earphones. We put a hook, at least we plan to put a hook on the other desk for earphones. Okay. Good, okay. What do you guys Sorry. think about that? I mean, a hook, is this thing gonna be stable enough to be able to carry some weight like that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Definitely, yeah. If, if you put the hook, if you built, I mean, you could almost cut the hook into the, into the wing as an extension oh, on the side. That's sweet. Um, it definitely would hold it there. That's a sweet idea, because all it is is one more cut. So can you see my screen now? Yes. Yeah. OK, so basically what I did is I took Perry's design and I had some questions for him and he answered them. And I mostly understood him and, and did him right. And then once in a while, I misunderstood him. And so um, the ideas came out a bit differently. But um, you know, it, it looks kind of the same. So I start out with this, this uh, desktop. And in my case, I've, I've taken the mortises all the way through okay. and I've included in them, um, I've included in them the Mickey Mouse ears, which I, is not, I, I initially did a dog bone, but then I liked Perry's suggestion. And so I went back in and I changed the dog bones to, to the Mickey Mouse ears uh, because they're more, they're more minimal. And <laughs> In this case, I'm showing them having been made with a one eighth inch bit. And even then they're pretty small. But if you want to see what it looks like with a one sixteenth inch bit, let's just come in here and change the router. Are you, did, you choose, did you choose to make this something we could watch happen so that you could change a parameter on it? <laughs> pretty much. Um, the gig is up, yes. <laughs> uh, however in a design this complex it you know it does take a, a little bit for it to happen now you see what happens when you actually did them with a 1 16th inch bit and if i turn on the legs um you'll see that the gap is is really tiny yeah yeah and so i've implemented that throughout most of the design some of it is still dog bones because i initially did the dog bone and we were having the conversation back and forth. And then Perry um, showed me his idea of going in at a 45. And so um, I followed up on it. And you know, if you want to see, again, we're not really doing lessons as much anymore. But if you want to see what that looks like. Hey, Tim, just out of curiosity, when, when Perry was doing it, he was everything with a 1 8, excuse me, 1 quarter inch. And now you've had one one end mill change at the end to uh, well actually on each pallet you had to do one end mill change to do the uh, we'll call them the Mickey Mouse ears is that correct? It was the same on mine. I needed to do an eighth a sixteenth of an inch pallet uh, pass too. You did you did also oh, okay good. I just was wondering if there was a difference between them on that or not. Sounds like there isn't. Okay. Okay, and just for methodology. Um, I want to show you guys how 
I did this sketch. Whoops. Is that my sketch? No, that's the wrong sketch. Um, thought that was it. I think it's this one here. Yes. Okay. So the way to do this is kind of interesting. And that is that you start drawing lines in construction mode and you're, you'll, you'll uh, lock right onto this vertex at the corner, draw your line out here, put the, the dimension on, which in my case is a parameter, of course, and then put the hit tab and put the angle in. And so first you don't have the circle, you just have this construction line out to here. And you do that on all the corners. And then when you come in with the regular circle, you can just click on one end for the center of the circle and click on the other end of the line for the end of the circle and boom, you have the circle and it is parametrically driven by the parameter that drove the, um, the line here, which is the radius yeah. of, the, uh, of the router bit. So half the, half the router diameter. Yeah. So that's just a little tip I wanted to kind of point out that I learned eventually to, to, to make this a, a simpler thing to do. Now, um, part of what I wanted to, uh, to do is kind of look at the assembly part because uh, Perry was working out the geometry and, and he knows what the, what the joinery is going to be. He, he just hadn't had the time to put it in. And uh, what I'm doing isn't any different than what, what he was intending to do. I just wanted to, to walk through it um, to satisfy myself and to teach myself and to be able to, uh, to demonstrate it. So uh, uh, just to be clear where, where, the, where the credits are here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is turn off the desktop and show the wing. Um, and so these, these lock together. So if, if I were to hide the leg, you see this slot that's yeah. in here. And this slot happens to have dog bones on it still, I think, because it was hidden. Or maybe I did get in and, and do the others. And we're talking about one half inch, right? So there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of stability in all directions when you slot half inch in half inch. Yeah. Correct. So, and, and again, I want to give you another tip in, in um, Fusion 360. And that is, I didn't cut a slot in both parts. I cut a slot in one part in this case, the bridge or the wing, I guess we called it. I cut the slot in the wing. I didn't cut the slot in the leg, but I used the combined feature, which is Boolean operations and did a cut. So yeah. I used this as a tool to cut material away from this. Now it fits. And if I change the dimensions in one place, I don't have to worry about the other. It's gonna follow because that combined operation is going to be uh, recalculated according to nice. okay. Wouldn't it be nice when they, if they make the preacher where you can actually add a tie clearance around between the two, then it, that's the it needs to be an added feature. It, it would be nice. Yeah. Cause otherwise it's, it's a little bit of a challenge. Um, Very I mean, tight. You could put in a clearance. Uh, you, still clearance have to go in, you still have to go in and modify one of the, get one of the, one of the uh, slots to be five thousandths or eight thousandths or whatever. I started using eight thousandths, which is actually maybe still too big, but yeah, that's that's where that's what causes me pain. I have to go, always go back in and do that after the fact. I love combine. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, that works well. And so I did the same thing. Here was my idea with the with the uh, boxes on the side. So let me um, turn on the box here. But let's hide uh, part of it, or let's leave leave this one on. Turn this one off, so you can see what I'm doing here. So it's the same thing. There's a slot part way through. And then this guy here is going to have the corresponding um, slot in it so that it yeah. will slide right on there and interlock. Make some true drop-ins. So, so these two sides are drop-ins and then the end pieces and these two bottom pieces are mirror images of each other and they go in. And one thing I tried, but the assembly gets a little bit complicated um, here on the bottom is I actually took the uh, uh, a tenon on the bottom halfway through 
and, and cut the slot all the way through on, on the wing here. Um, but how you actually achieve that assembly, uh, assembly sequence, I, I haven't exactly worked out because it, it almost kind of interlocks with something that's gonna be challenging. In reality, well, this, I, I think I would just cut that off. This, this particular design really would require us to assemble the whole top before it was delivered, right? I think so. I mean, if it's I did, complicated enough that it would probably be a challenge for most people to figure out. It, it might be, but here's what you could do potentially. Um, let me see here. So first, first you could build this box. So this box has, you know, the usual finger joints. Yeah. You glue them together, and it has effectively this slot. The only difference would be, I think I would, I would run the slot all the way through the bottom. Yeah, if you did that, then you could drop it in, yeah. Then it would just drop right in. So then you would take the wing and you would drop in one box and you would drop in the other box. And the top. Right, and um, what I did on the, on the top, because I misunderstood what Perry was talking about, the lip, I was thinking of undermount. Um, and what I did, this could be flush to here. And when the desk goes down, that's actually going to force it to be level. And that would be enough. Yeah. What I did by mistake, um, by misunderstanding, was I put the rabbit in the bottom. And so that box would go in here. But that was not necessary, right? But I don't think that's necessary. That's an unnecessary complication. I'm going to remove that from the suggestion. That was that was me misunderstanding what what Perry was saying. So it's basically the top and bottom are just flat. There's no rabbit anywhere, and the box is forced level and forced flush as the top goes on and <coughs> pushed into Correct. position. Correct. Okay. So when the when the wing locks into the box, it forces the box against the desktop. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a great idea. And you can just put a little glue on the top edge of the top rim of the box and that glues it to the, to the top, to the yeah. table. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, and then the legs go in, they just slide into this slot. Yeah. Right. And uh, let's see, this other box should already be there. And the, um, the foot pads, skis, whatever we want to call them, go on. Now what I did there is rather than just extend a straight, I went more, a little bit more like a finger joint, I guess you might consider it, so that it doesn't, so it really stops it. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and actually, Tim, before you get further on, can we go back up to the lid? I'm thinking now about the assembly, and there was one point at which we said it could be seven pieces, and one of those seven, probably the most important and the most complicated, was the top. And I'm wondering with the way we've talked about those side boxes being pushed flush against the desktop because of the wings. I mean, can, can you do just wings, side boxes and top assembly separately so that that is one unit? I guess, I don't know how it slides onto. That was my thought. So okay, my so thought one is, unit there. My thought is this is one assembly that we build. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, a, a TV tray. Right. Uh, yeah. But hold on. We, <laughs> there needs to be something added here because the, the, the actual top isn't locked to the rest of it. It's the legs that lock it all together. Yeah. And you also need the legs to provide the structure that if that glue is going to dry and if the top is going to be pressed down hard and I mean, it, it's almost like you need the legs in order to get the whole top assembly right. But if we added another uh, mortise and tenon between the wing and the desktop, and we glued that, then we would we could pre-build this entire sub-assembly. So like a, well, you uh, don't a think mortise and tenon like the boxes or something? Were... Sorry, go ahead, Doug. I was just gonna say, so you don't think if the boxes were pre-made with the slot, that they wouldn't be able to go ahead and put the legs, put this piece across and drop the boxes in? 
I think I they think, would be. I think they could. It's very, it's with those obvious slots in the middle and a picture, it, it's really self-explanatory. You can't, it, it goes in either, either direction, won't go I in agree. upside down. I agree. Yeah, so basically you start, here's the wing, this is, this is the spine, this is the, the uh, you know, the skeleton of the, of, the, of the device. This is the main yep. structural element. So they would drop in the boxes with the change we talked about. So they yeah. would actually just drop in. Yeah, just drop and in. then yep. they would slot in the legs. Lift it up, slot a leg, slot and a leg. Yep. Put the okay. desktop on. I would go under and put the put the feet on first, to probably put, to, put to stabilize it. Desk. You're right. But yeah, and, and then then, then go ahead and put the glue on those little the top lips of the boxes, yeah. the top tenons on those things, and then put the top on. Then pile your books on I, top. I, I, I do think, think I, I've come around a little bit i think uh, I, I was initially thinking that ikea was the bar but but i, I have having visions of people kind of cursing at their ikea instructions as they're halfway through the bill and it's not going very well and 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 i also think that there's something to be said for you know they do have those locking cams right which do really help kind of pull things together yes. and i think relying on weight to put this together is certainly a factor but you know you, you do want this to come together nicely and and i do think if we can in the design make it so that sub assemblies could be made uh, and so there's very minimal assembly that would have to be done we have to remember some of these environments will not have the best parental support and there may be a case where you know i'm not saying a kid would necessarily be need need to build it by themselves but <clears throat> maybe without a lot of help be able to get something usable so i, I think there's something to be said for you know in some cases you know, maybe they're at the school, right? Once we drop these off, that they do that one assembly and it's just, you know, put a couple pieces together or if the, if the parent wanted that, right? Or, mm -hmm. or that, you yeah. know, there's, you know, only steps they do. I think there's some value in that. Hey, yeah, we're, you know, that I'm so glad you talked about the cams with Ikea and how it just sort of like clamped everything together in that finished form. And when I heard um, Perry and Tim talk about this design, because of the slotting, it was in my mind's eye, always that pressure from above that was gonna force everything to be tightly put together. And I was hearing that as well, when we had the two legs in and we put the top on, and by pushing the top on, the side boxes were pushed flush up against the bottom of the desktop. And it just like, it, 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 would, it, it would come together the way the cams in an Ikea project forced things to come together. And I guess I was hoping without having, I didn't really know these were the words I wanted to say, but to this, such that this project got to the point where they would have that same tight fit conclusion when in the end there was weight put on it and all the joints were therefore forced together to provide no gaps, no play, good fit, stability, that sort of a thing. And that's what I was hearing when, when I heard uh, Perry talk in the beginning about the assembly. And I'm even feeling it more now with these side boxes, but it, we have to put it together enough to give that experience and deliver that result to the students and their families. And I don't yeah, know if it's possible, think, I'm just throwing out those ideas. I think making a two or three of these would really give us a good understanding of how well the wood geometry holds together yep. and, and how much play we have. Um, I think just doing, just doing two or three of those would give us a lot of understanding. Uh, Travis and I made a, a tricycle cupcake car that was made out of some thin, thin plywood and the design had like um, stuff like this. We use screws um, that were pre-marked, you know, pre-drilled, pre but I was just stunned at how much just a small recess gave, how much stability and how much in the ease of uh, assembly, they just kind of fit right in place. Um, I think this is going to be good. Doug, I, I got to tell you, what it does to our credibility with this audience, when you bring up the fact that we worked on tricycle, cupcake, cars, I mean, come on. You just totally destroyed our credibility. <laughs> oh, show a picture. 
<laughs> Can Another I just time. say, okay. as, yeah, far, as far as pre-building components of this, I think that it's really difficult to underestimate the general public skill at doing things like this. Yeah. yeah. We're coming this from at this from a very biased perspective of this is what we do. Yeah. Right? And you're giving this to people who may have never done anything like this before. Right. And so I think that the more we can do for them and still have it fit in their car is gonna guarantee a lot more success when you're talking about many, many of these. Yep. So and I also think it would be great if we had a video of people actually putting it together. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a great like, idea. Turn that's it upside idea. down to put the legs on, for example. That's the best so, idea of the meeting right there. Yep. That's why she should talk more often. Uh -huh. <laughs> Actually, you know, I'm thinking now, if, if we did the top assembly together and the two sides with skids were assembled, it leaves me wondering about that lower cross member. Could somebody talk a little bit more about how that goes together and how it is that they wouldn't need clamps to be successful? Um, I'm not. I'm not finished with it yet. I'm not yeah, thrilled you, with it yet. Uh, Perry, what do you what do you think? I don't want to dish your design, Tim, but could you make it more like the other one? <laughs> 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 it seems kind of big. <laughs> That didn't come out right, but I was thinking <laughs> you know, the same so. thing. I was wondering about that part that protrudes down below the slot. Yeah, oh, this here. Uh, he has one, but maybe if you make it two or three box joints, and you've already had the rest of it clamped together, I think it'll be pretty solid just with glue. Yeah, and the point is just to do left left to right stability. Couldn't you just make it so that again it kind of slots into both the legs, kind of like the other parts do, where pressure from above will actually put the pieces together rather than have to put it in from the orthogonal angle. Oh. That was the, if you remember right, the, uh, can I uh, can I have the screen again for just a second? Sure. Hopefully I won't take 20 minutes to figure it out this time. <laughs> yeah, we get the whopping 640 by 480. <laughs> yeah, with that. Share screen. Yeah, to do it Ikea way, you would probably want it with like two notches on one side and one on the other so you can only put it in one way. Oh, right. Uh -huh. As opposed to that could be flipped either way or something. You could polarize it, yeah. Oh, is that what it's called? Cool. So you can't assemble it wrong. I love that idea. Hang on. There we go. Fair stand. So if you look, you can basically do it this way. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, I like that approach yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. And Could somebody remind us why you guys did the skis? Was it for additional front to back stability or stability and better on carpets to, to move around? Definitely better on carpets. Yeah. But how do you marry the ski design with this? So now this is back, back, back to you. Tim. Would you just simply you raise it another three quarter? I mean, eighth of an inch and make tenons underneath? Is that what I you think said? he yeah. had those little tenons, just that in the his design, it was clipping it off, right? You have you have little tenons that extend down below the legs into the skis, I believe, right? Correct, Perry? correct, correct. I did. Yeah, I just yeah. they just weren't showing on that. Okay. <clears throat> and with the precision of CNC, going back to, I don't remember who put us on this tangent, but oh, maybe it was Kurt. The whole notion of putting pressure on from above and with that pressure, having stability. We've already talked about that with the top and the boxes, the top and the wings, the top and the legs. We hadn't talked about it with the regards to the top and the bottom cross section, but with what Perry just showed us, we'd get that too, because with the precision yep. cutting that we could do on a CNC, you'd know that it would be fully slotted and then you'd have just the tenon below to go into the ski. Okay, somebody should say to Travis, that was too many words. <laughs> <laughs> For an hour and a half into this, that was too many words. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what intending to say. <laughs> well, that was it, though. That was it in a nutshell. Could, could we go just back to the 
cost element here. To me, it looks like we've got $50 of material and probably yeah. $50 of time on your CNC machines. And if you're going to go with IKEA, you would have to have inch banding on everything. Um, we seem to be costing ourselves up into the $150, $200 area here. Am I, am I completely out? Well, CNC time is free. So labor is free. Um, we're going to be approaching sponsors to contribute this in exchange for some branding and uh, some PR when we get it, we'll include them in that. Uh, it, it, it doesn't, the notion about finished half inch ply sounds lovely. And that would be really nice to get. We don't, we haven't even begun talking to sponsors yet uh, about this. Um, but even if we don't have success with sponsors in giving us materials, so it's, it's actually contributing materials, we have uh, some money in the kitty right now, $1,000 to go towards this. And we have a community that we haven't even begun to ask to fund this. So it's a com completely important question for us to uh, address. I know that Kurt, you had done that on the other desk and come up with, was it around $54 or what did you come up with? Yeah, it was about 50 bucks. Yeah. About 50 bucks. So if you assume the same thing here and that's material costs and they're contributed, then we don't have to worry about the labor. I mean, I say that whimsically. We don't have the labor yet, but we have a small cohort of folks willing to work on these things. So uh, I think we have to make some progress on those conversations and um, it hasn't even begun. So um, keep us, keep our noses to the grindstone on that, uh, Chris, because we do need to get that answer. But Maybe, Kurt, if you wouldn't mind forwarding your uh, financial breakdown to Chris so we could see uh, what it is that we've done on the other desk. We might get some good feedback from Chris um, if he were to see what was done. Travis? Yes. You could, also, you could also just do the desktop in the finished plywood and then use unfinished for the rest of it, and it looks just fine. Oh, right, right, right. Um, Sorry, this is just a, uh, I just see what you're doing now. And I realized that one thought I shared with Kurt last week was those laser cut pieces could almost be taken off as a completely separate independent project. So we have CNC people and we have laser people because there's so many members with one or the other or both. And uh, I could see where you could go to a Lou Adzima or um, a bunch of other people and ask them to do the laser pieces and just deliver them to the shop or the CNC pieces and deliver them to the shop. Uh, I'm throwing that out there because as this breaks down into a, a work doling out process, the laser and the CNC make a lot of sense to be broken out because people have different skill sets or different machines. So what are you showing us, Barry? This is uh, Tim. Tim. Oh, I was saying Tim now, okay. I was just, uh, while people were talking, I was just looking at changing this brace to the, the, the design Perry showed from his other table because I, I agree, I much prefer that approach. So try to keep one of your parameter. <laughs> that? Uh, one, of my concerns, one of my concerns with the brace is going to be there's going to be a lot of little feet kicking it. So keep that in mind. If you can possibly make it so that it's little kid feet defendant. Dependable. What is that? What does that yeah, mean? That's where gonna put the... In other words, when a kid's sitting at this desk, where are they going to put their feet? They're going to put it on that brace. Right, right. I think it does oh, depend though on the, on the distance. I was thinking depends about on the distance. Too. What about turning it 90 degrees so that it's actually a footrest? I like the idea of it being a footrest. And then you yeah. could slide it in with slots. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Yep. Yeah. As long as it's not interfering with the chair. So it's going to be at the back. Yeah, it has to be at the back. And it, I mean, I, I don't have a sense. I didn't have a sense with the other desk either of scale because I kept thinking of looking at it as a full size piece. And it was really quite a bit smaller than that. But um, what was I'm the challenge? thinking that the feet are going to go on it. So why not make it a foot rest? Yeah. All as a brace. Yeah. Well, yeah, and if there's if there's a small piece of scrap um, that could be glued right across that, um, 
you know, with the same contour, just glued onto it, double it up, and then it would probably handle, um, yeah, you know, some some. Yeah, it is on extra it glue up is the thing. Or use three quarters. Yeah. Or use three quarters. Yeah. Yeah. But if you if you slide it in, um, yeah, it, I, I I think it depends on how far away it is from where they're actually sitting because. The kids' legs are not as long as you might think, at least the younger ones. So it, it might not get tons of abuse. Hey guys, are we at the point where we think we might know what the prototype we'd like to test looks like? I think we did. I think we are, right? Getting close, I think. I think yeah, we're watching it happen in real time. <laughs> I think we know we want to see at least one. Yeah, agreed, agreed, right. Yeah, I think the box design, how it will slip into a, yeah. a slot there yeah. and fit under the table is like bingo. Really, really cool. Um, what Perry showed all fits together. And I mean, that's, I, I think just with those two, would probably be it. I mean, I think just we learn a heck of a lot from how how to assemble that and how strong it's going to be. And that footrest will um, stick a ten year old at it and see where their feet go. And yeah. And uh, if you wanted to delegate the cutting of the laser pieces to me, I'd be happy to do that, for folks. What about on this bin? Why don't we just hang it off the side of the desk and not have it notched in there? Mm. We're we're giving ourselves headaches trying to figure that out, but I'm just looking at bins that would just hang on the side of it. Just a thought. Oh wait, you're talking about some of the things you've been putting into the chat. Uh, yeah, but I just found something that'll just—it's almost like a wall-mounted um, thing that hangs on the on the side of a wall. I'll, I'll put it in the in the chat, but I'm just I'm trying to look for simplicity. And what would that make it simple? Say again. Yeah, if it could be hung with just a couple simple? of holes. Yeah, yeah. No screws, just kind of go into the hole and some somehow. That's a great idea. It. And Kim, which one is it? I'm now? sorry. The, which one are you talking about when you're talking about uh, just a couple of holes? Um. Yeah, Paul was talking about a bin that would go on the side of the legs, remove the bins that we're talking about at the top, yeah, yeah. and then just have bins that attach to the to the outside of those oh, legs. I see. Okay. And yeah. I was saying, well, that'd be great if you know it's like he was talking wall mount, and I'm like, well, we don't want to have. Do we want to use screws and screw it in and stuff? Maybe not. But if there's something that a a bin that has hooks already on it. Well, that French could be plate, French almost like something plate. that goes on a pegboard. Yeah. You know, French then we would just. Work. Right, you could do something like a French cleat. I, I do uh, think there's some value in having stuff that kids can see. I wouldn't want it under the top so that it was out of out of sight. I think there's value in having it that they can see what's what's in the bins. I think, uh, particularly for like pens yeah. and crayons and that kind of thing. Yeah, I put something in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, You're gonna for the current design. We build one with the current design, and if we find any other bins, we can prototype it on what what we right, made. Right, right. And Doug will have actually right. tested this notion of the uh, drop-in laser cut pieces and whether or not weight from above tightens everything up. I mean, really, where we've landed from this conversation just seems pretty exciting. It'd be fun to see one of these things in action. And oh, so you're talking about from the backside, Tim, for that cross member as opposed to a diagonal, the way that. Uh, it, that's it. Shouldn't be straight. It shouldn't be horizontal. It needs to be at an angle. Well, this, I was responding to the idea that it might be a foot rest, but I don't and like it because it, 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 weak, it weakens it too much. I don't like this. Well, it I agree. Could be a, <laughs> yeah. the edge of the board that's sticking upward. You know, go back to what uh, Perry had. That entire. Uh, Half inch wide uh, member was a place you could rest your foot on. I, I that's what I understood you guys to be talking about. That was just my reaction. Yeah, I think it's going to be a foot rest where it was. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, I think that's probably enough. Sorry to make you do what work for nothing. Oh no, this is this is why I say I have to do things iteratively. You and could make a bookcase. Were you, were you gonna... Oh, now he's seeing a we... shelf. Is that what you're saying? There? <laughs> now we're making. Yeah, you could put a bookshelf back there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tim, what what was it that you had to do to the top to make that an assemblable part? There was one other modification needed there too. Is that right? Oh, I need. We need to put um, a tenon on the wing, or tenons on the wing, and mortises on the desktop so that we lock the wing into the desktop. But Tim, let's not have that one through. Let's have that one hidden. I don't know. Why do you need to do that? If you have tenants going into the desktop from the wing or with from the legs and the wing is locked to the legs, then the desktop coming down on the top kind of locks them all together. It's already captured, yeah. Yeah. No, but the legs aren't part of that subassembly. Oh, oh so. right, right, right. Remember, uh, Perry, that was going to be. Uh, yeah, so yeah, you're dependent on that. Uh, so you are thinking that they won't be able to assemble this, that you would have to put I think the you shelves. give it the option to yeah, make it as simple to. as possible. Yeah. Right, so design it in so it could be as simple as possible. Yeah. Right. Yeah, if, if this is going to be the assembly, then we need to lock the desktop in somehow. Yeah. It's no more effort to put the, the tenons in there. No, it's it's easy. Although you would, could you do everything from the bottom? I'm yeah, trying, trying, to, trying, to, trying to make it a double-sided operations, but I think that yeah, doesn't. It's just two tenons on that cross piece right in the middle. Yeah, it's two tenons on on the on this wing, and and um, blind mortises yeah. in the top. And while we're making blind mortises, we can turn these into blind ones as well. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Exactly. Okay. It's just a one-sided operation. That's my concern. So it's fine. Yep. Yeah, I could see why that would be a concern. What a hassle. <laughs> yeah, you do. I think in mass production here, we're going to make a lot of them. Yeah. So guys, I'm just thinking that uh, as we approach two hours, maybe when we start figuring out if we want to wind down and what the next steps are. I, I heard an offer at the very beginning from Perry, and it sure sounds to me like with the changes we've made, it would be a pretty smart thing to uh, cut one of these and get together and build one. Yeah. And since Perry is the one that said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's not out skiing. Yeah. Right, right. Who wouldn't want to get into your skiing time there, Tim? Well, you gotta, we got to decide to do the boxes for sure before we can go that, to that step. Yeah. Say that again, please. Gotta, the box problem has to be resolved before you can do that. What is the box problem? What it's going to be. To your question. I, I was assuming that what we're looking at is what the box would be for the first go round. Well, it depends quarter, on what quarter inch plywood. When you said that, uh, say that again, Tim. I'm sorry. Perry did it with half inch. I did it with quarter inch. Oh, I was assuming quarter inch. Just yeah. I'm sorry. That's all I was thinking. Yeah, let's do the quarter. I think I have enough left over. Probably we could do that on the laser. Okay. And frankly, we have a lot of quarter inch or three mil at the shop, so that's not really going to be a big issue. As long as we tell you guys what the size is. <laughs> what are we the slots the right size, yeah. Exactly. So you're you're actually farther along this than I am, Tim. So do you have time to give me something to cut? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I do. Um, could you do me a favor though? And like I say, I'm I, I'm horrible at, at coming up with the aesthetics on my own. And send me a snap of that table that has the the wing that we're the uh, oh, brace sure. that we're going to use. Because uh, I like that that brace much better. Yeah, it was, and it was I'll implement that. Way curved. I like that. I and can do that. If I know Kurt, he's taken notes of everything that needs to be done here. So um, the um, the half mortises in the desktop. Um, I need to. Uh, there's a few other things that I'm aware of that I need to change, and then the brace. But uh, all in all, I, I don't think that's more than a couple hours uh, work at some point. And um, what a better way to recuperate, recuperate from being tired on the slopes than sitting down in front of your computer and doing some design. Well, that or, you know, I'll, I will be home on Friday, so. Oh, OK. <laughs> Sounds good. So, um, so, so, Kurt, Kurt, try and get, 
I'll, Sorry, I'll have an objective to try and get this to somebody by by uh, the weekend, and in particular the laser boxes I can get quicker than that. Okay, cool. Hey Kurt, how did you want to do follow up on the laser boxes? Do you, do you want to do them? Do you want me to do them? You want me to shop? What do you want to do? Uh, Travis, if you've got the time in the wood and you want to knock them out, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I, I'm on the road after next Tuesday, so I'll do it between now and Tuesday if I can get the design files. Just the, S, just the SVGs, that's all I need. Okay, Tim? Sounds yeah. good, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll generate DXFs and okay, to Kurt and then, um, and then you can get away with, get going with the laser and I'll, uh, I'll have CNC, I should have the CNC stuff ready to go for somebody by Saturday morning. Cool. Yeah. No problem. I have plenty to work on until then. <laughs> All right. Is there? Anything I only have four projects going on. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's good for me. Keeps me back. Keeps me busy. Tim, the fact that you're willing to do this, even when you're out on the road, is I mean, thank you. No worries. It's kind of amazing. I try and get this. Uh, I, I like I like both of these designs. I like. Um, I like working with other people's creativity. So I like what Perry's done on this design. I like uh, where Julia got us on the other design. And um, so, you know, my my creativity is an implementation if, if that's creative enough. I think uh, we've got us a functioning team, Tim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> great. Okay. All right, Kirk, was there anything else? No, this is great. Okay, right. Tim. Looking forward to seeing it. Thanks for everything. Thanks, Thanks, thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, great. Cool. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Good, Ciao.